this is the old PC. It's a Z87 motherboard and an i7-4070. I already did a video on it with paired up with a bunch of GPUs to see if you, if you get a $40 system without a GPU and a decent CPU, although I don't think I don't think fourth gen Intel is decent in 2025. We we see it's usually best to put in a period ac period accurate a around the same era and age GPU with an old CPU because usually with when you pair an old GPU as we've seen before in some testing with a old an old GPU with a newer CPU, you become GPU bottlenecked in games. And if you pair a newer GPU in with an older c CPU, we become you get decent FPS, but we become bottlenecked in literally every way else. This motherboard only supports DDR3. This it PCIe 3.0, no NVMe. Uh, some of these could be worked around with GitHub, but at that rate, just get a new system. And not to... Some of the downsides of having an old case like this is that all the fan holes, they're all on 80 and 92 millimeter year only fans. So, I can't... The only, the on, the only form of high ventilation we have is the CPU tower cooler, which takes up most of the case. But anyways, on to what I was on this video for. We're going to see the ultimate incompatibility of old and new hardware. New-ish, I got this years ago. The Intel Arc A380 from ASRock. <clears throat> in Wars of Warships 1080p very high settings we see the ARC 380 does decently actually <clears throat> I just felt a stutter but it's not unplayable there's absolutely nothing wrong with putting an ARC in an older system but what's a but the issue is not up with if compatibility now, as Intel's Alchemist drivers have gotten better and more compatible, it's the fact that anything else exists. But considering current GPU prices, the ARC A380 is not a bad entry level option. In fact, I think it's the only closest to a truly entry level option. Actually, it's not even entry level. It's true mid range, as the Arc A31, the A310 exists. And so, as this as a mid range GPU is not that bad, even though people like to complain about six gigabytes of VRAM. The, for the price that we have of the A380, it's not exactly horrible though <laughs> arc requiring rebar almost to perform decent fps is questionable at best but it's almost standard on almost anything nowadays so i don't see much of an issue if i'm not mistaken world of worship runs on directx 11 so for the translation layer we're doing pretty decently. Or I could be wrong. Have to look it up. Um, on a true DirectX 9 game, we have, have some pretty decent 100 FPS numbers. What? And just as someone's stealing our intel, <laughs> I 
Our 1% lows are near a 100, our 0.1% lows are at a 60, and our averages are around 100. It seems the Dark Next 9 translation layer, or even... It, or I don't actually know, I haven't touched up an arc in a while. But it's running on a translation layer. Dang it. And that translation layer seems to be doing better. Of course, there's a stutter here and there. Oh, he killed him. There's a stutter here and there. We don't seem to be having much of an issue. Although, our arc is pegged at a hundred. Well, that could be also due to the fact that it runs, it's supposed to run on PCIe 4.0, but we're running at 3.0 and there's only eight functional lanes. But in terms of power draw, we're barely even utilizing past 75 watts, and this thing requires external power? Hmm. Could be that it's not being fully utilized, or something else. Either way, this is a pretty power efficient system. Wow, when did this happen? Seriously, when did it happen? When did Overwatch 2 have direct X12? February 4th. Alright. <laughs> so maybe... That was unexpected. I was gonna go into Overwatch 2 with DirectX 11. But no. Looks like we have DirectX. DirectX... 12 on ultra settings. Let's go. Dang it. The Intel Arc A380 in Overwatch 2, 1080p FSR1 ultra settings. We see that our 1% lows are <laughs> below 30, so it's gonna be a stuttery game. But with a little settings te tweaking, we can probably get a more stable, stable FPS. And this isn't the best it can offer. Mind you, rebar is off because, uh, 4th gen Intel. So you could probably get a better, better experience if you had something with a re with rebar. Probably AM4 base, but it's still AM4. Even or maybe Intel 12th gen if you're. Come on, come on, hold stuff, hold. There you go. Temperature wise, we're pretty confusingly in the in the 72 zone, but then again, at the same time, we're also running in a low airflow case, so I don't know what I was expecting. CPU-wise, we're doing pretty well. Well, this isn't about the CPU, but it's a seventh, but it's a fourth-gen Intel, so it's not that bad. <clears throat> Final thoughts. Well, the arc works, but you're not gonna be able to. No, you're gonna be able to do almost everything. The only issue is that other cards exist, like. Like the period accurate GTX 980, paired with this old i5 force i5, this i7 force gen, it's gonna be pretty decent. Maybe you can go bump it up to a 20 series maximum, and then you'll be pushing this i7. But at that rate, if you have, I would just recommend you just build an a APU system with with the Ryzen's 8000 series. CPUs. But what the benefits of running this system was, we were completely below 75 watts. We didn't even need to use this 8 pin over here. 
but but overall, I think you could have had a better experience with the GTX 980 than an Intel Arc A380. Unless you're doing AV1 encoding, and but don't have the money to afford the rest of the system. So, so I guess that's a use case. I don't know how much of you are actually know what AV1 is even is. Either way. Leave a like if you liked the video, leave a dislike if you didn't, and make sure to leave a comment so I can know your feedback.